Hello, and welcome to another video. Uh, today we will be playing some new decks with new commanders uh, to spice things up. Tameshi Reality Architect Brew. It is a semi-control deck that looks to abuse uh, Tameshi's second ability of returning a land to my hand to bring a either an artifact or an enchantment from my graveyard back to the battlefield. You can do that by using Mystic Sanctuary to continually bounce it back to my hand and use uh, extra turns to get infinite turns which is fun and then stuff like lotus bloom and uh aura for silence where we can control the board sack it to draw cards then bring it back and like same with lotus bloom where we can get a semi black lotus which is fun uh multiple times a turn uh, yeah so i think this deck is sweet and hopefully you will enjoy watching me play it okay uh this is our starting seven and it's looking real good uh we have artifacts that we can put in the bin right away uh so we can start drawing cards with tameshi we have monastery mentor which is one of the best cards in our deck uh, we have ways to get our lotus bloom with urza saga and moon silver key spell seeker we yeah this is just a solid uh solid opening hand i'm happy with it hey guys playing don worker thrascos today this is infinite mana dot deck we have a couple ways of getting there zerda kinnan but most importantly and the newest addition is devoted druid this hand is pretty fine it's a bit annoying to have emil already in hand but we do have a bunch of mana a remora turn one and enough tutors to just go grab us our dog side. Hi, my name is Mons, and today I'm playing Sean Lee Countless Kicks. It's a Azorius Commander, blue, white, that is going infinite with Nexus of Fate. And the plan is to multi kick Mystical Tutor onto Sean Lee. So whenever she attacks, I can cast Mystical Tutor and always find Nexus of Fate and hence forward go infinite turns. Otherwise, it's a very cute commander focused control deck. Just casting a bunch of spells, getting into the graveyard, cast Chun Li, and get value. So my opening hand is... It, like, it has the pieces. We have Nexus of Fate, but we don't have any rocks. We kind of want to have some mana rocks for some acceleration here. We have a Gitaxa probe, but honestly, this is the first seven. We can do better. Let's mulligan. A blue source of mana would be great for the opt here. So I'm mulliganing again, going down to six. And I'm gonna stop. We have a Soul Ring. Misdirection is kind of cool. A little bit too many lands, but I don't want to go down to five, go missing out on a Soul Ring. So we're sticking with this hand. Hi, today I'm playing Tevit, Teller of Secrets. The main game plan of the deck is to land a time sieve because time sieve is a one card combo with my commander both it to be and connecting in combat creates enough treasures or enough artifacts to sacrifice them to take an extra turn and thusly take infinite turns uh, i'm also a mid-range ad nos as per deck so i still have oracle consult as a backup and a nos if i want to so my first seven is pretty great i have loads of mana i have a turn two commander i have gilded drake if someone lands an early commander themselves i can also play the gilded drake turn one and i do have a tainted pact which i can use either to go for an aggressive time steve or maybe just as a a plus b oracle combo we'll see how it goes and with that let's start a match all right i will start the game i will draw a card I will play Urza Saga for land return, play a Mishra's Bauble. Uh, I will crack it to look at Pontus's top card. Uh, and with that, I will pass the turn. Going to my turn. Breaking pool. Tap. Then I will play a Miss Grimora. Yes. That is really bad. I've noticed that my win ratio is very terrible with this deck whenever I go up against a Mystic Remora because um, my deck is feeding that thing. Like, I'm gonna give it one card now on my Soul Ring. And whenever I basically attack, I give a card draw away again. I might have to sit back and play slowly forward from this, or I just have to feed into that thing, and that usually ends up being very terrible. Like every game I have with Shu Lin, there's always a fish, and there's always me sitting there and feeding the fish, and I don't really know how to solve the solution. I would so wish I have a mental misstep right now, I don't have one, but yeah, this is, uh, this is bad. And if that's good, I'll pass my turn. Draw a card for turn. Here is a Prismatic Vista. I sacrifice that. Finding an island. Tapping the island for a Soul Ring. And then I pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a Wingswept Teeth. Fetch. Finding a Tundra. Uh, yeah, that fish really puts a hamper on me. I would like to just spew out my hand, keep force up and pass with my commander next turn. But I don't think that's a reasonable play to do here, sadly. Uh, I think I'll follow in Monster's footsteps and use play a Sol Ring and pass. Uh, because there's no not really any wheels here, I don't think. Uh, maybe Mons has Windfall, maybe Amnesty has a Wheel of Fortune, but it's not that many to be scared of, so I can sandbag my fast mana a bit here. I'll tap the Tundra to cast a Sol Ring. 
And then I'll pass my turn. I will go to my turn. That ruins my plans. So that is the one card we did not want to draw because having to suspend Lotus Bloom is a lot worse than searching for it through Urza Saga, which was my plan. Ugh. All right, we're gonna have to figure something out. We'll play this Polluted Delta here. We'll crack it for a Tundra. Um, and then I'm going to pay two to make a construct. And this feels super bad. I'm going to suspend a Lotus Bloom and uh, pass the turn. All right, going to my turn. Pay for the fish sheet. I'll play a Mana Confluence. I will play a Mana Crypt. And I would like to cast Green Sun Zenith for two. I'll just grab a kit. And then I'll uh, pass my turn. Oh, this is so horrible. He has mana for that fish forever. And like, like <laughs> and everyone is probably going to feed it. So it's going to stick around. Ah. <sighs> Oh well. I'm tapping and uh, drawing card for turn. Let's play a Polluted Delta. I kind of want to play my Gitaxian Probe. I kind of want to play my Peak. We have mana for our interaction here, but I think we're just going to pass turn here and keep my... I not feed the fish with a Gitaxian Probe. That's better. Take my turn. Land for turn would be a Mist Rainforest, which I will crack to fetch. Finding an underground, underground sea. So the Mana Crypt and Kinnon probably means that the fish will stay there for quite a bit. So I think I'll actually feed the fish here, but I will feed the fish and still Kinnon, which I think is a pretty good play actually, because three rocks and a Kinnon is pretty much pretty quite a lot of mana. And also I play my commander next turn, I think. I don't think I can afford it this turn if I steal Kinnon. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will feed the fish sadly, but I think it's for a good purpose that is furthering my game plan. I will tap two, floating a colorless mana, cast a Gildedrake. I'll take a Kinnon. Then I will cast a Mana Crypt. I'll tap Mana Crypt for three colorless, four colorless in pool total. I'll use two of them to cast a Demir Signet. I have a feeling Pontus is feeding the fish and then windfall here. I'm just guessing. Uh, with that, I'll pass the turn. I will go to my turn. Uh, I will draw a card. Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. I reveal uh, Temporal Mastery. So I will take an extra turn. Damn! Alright, and then I will remove... Uh, time counter from Lotus Bloom, and then I will sack Urza Saga to find a not Lotus Bloom. Tap Soul Rain to cast a uh, uh, Moon Silver Key, and I will play a Mystic Sanctuary tapped. Now go to my next turn. Remove a time counter from Lotus Bloom, play a Island, float a colorless, sack Moon Silver Key to grab a Mana Crypt, and put that into my hand, and then put it into play. I will play this here Monastery Mentor, another two and cast my commander and with that i will pass my second turn going to my turn um yeah letting fish die in the not dark card Woohoo! it's dead i'll play a threat quarry i really want my kinnon back i really want my kinnon back tap one for a spring leaf drum tap tap a thrasios and i have one floating tap tap take damage i'd like to sacrifice skill the drake and cast other you don't find seed bond amused with that so I'm gonna pass on the Eldritch Evolution. I'm going to respond to Eldritch Evolution. Uh, float two blue and a black. Use one blue and one black, so one blue floating. Cast a Tin Pact. Pass on Tin Pact. Okay. I actually sandbagged. I kind of want to respond to the Eldritch Evolution, but I kind of want them to respond with it more, and I feel behind. So like, when you're behind, you need to sometimes just pass on things and let other people that are ahead deal with it. So I will exile Goodness Shrine, Act of Negation, Talisman, Scrubland, Fluster Storm is pretty good. Stay on Fluster Storm. Use the blue, flo blue floating, cast the Fluster Storm. All targets on the Eldritch Revolution. Uh, with that counter, I'll pass my turn. In your end step, we're gonna tap this for blue. We're gonna cast Peak. I wanna look at your hand, Anis. Okay, you can hide your cards, and I'm gonna. And I will reveal to the table that he has a final devastation in his hand and an Emil de Blessed. However, he all he he also has a fierce guardianship in his hand. And if he didn't find if he if it wasn't if it was any other interaction, he would have used he could have he would have won here actually. Flusterstorm did the job. Oh yeah, you you're great, Pontus. I draw a card for peak. I will sacrifice the delta. I will find a tapped hallowed fountain. Then I will go to my turn and draw a card. I will play this. Flooded Strand. I'll pay two life and I want to look at Jordan's hand with my Gitaxian Probe. I know those cards, you can thank them back. Draw a card for Gitaxian Probe. I will pay one blue mana for a Mystic Remora. Really happy about the Mystic Remora here because I believe there's gonna be a counter war coming up soon. So I could sit here and just hold back. And then I'm gonna pass the turn. Take my turn. 
Bound return would be a gemstone caverns. Tap gemstone caverns, tap the meme signets for two blue, one black. Tap mana crypt for three, one blue floating, cast my commander. ETB trigger, let's vote. I vote for two treasures. I will give you a clue. You got a clue. I will give you a clue. Okay, I have two treasures and three clues. I will tap my soldering for three, use my floating blue mana to crack two clues. Draw two. Then I will pass my turn. Going to my turn. Um, I will remove the last time counter from Lotus Bloom and attempt to cast. No damage. Oh, and then I'll make a I'll trigger monastery monk and make a monk. I'm gonna crack Lotus Bloom for three white. Tap Mystic Sanctuary. Pay one white and return Sanctuary to my hand to return Lotus Bloom, and I will draw a card. I uh, will crack Lotus Bloom again for three blue. I will cast Spellseeker. Tutoring for a tutor and get Mystical Tutor. We will play Land Return, which will be Island. Oh, and we get another monk. We'll come at Mons for seven. I take seven. Uh, then I will pass the turn. Car draw a card and then I'll play a land. I will tap two and I will cast an Eladamri's Call. I'll grab the old, old faithful, old docky boy to my hand. I'll tap one. He's a generic. I'd like to play Dockside. I'm going to cast Fasas Intervention. One, one, and two. You need to pay four mana or it's countered. Sure. I will let that get countered. Then I'll use the one floating and a blue. I'll play a Leisure Shredder. And then I'll pass my turn. Go to my turn on tap. Pay for fish. Play a land. Planes. Tap planes for an Esper Sentinel. Pass the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn, it says Calling Tarn. I will fetch. Finding a Hallowed Fountain, paying two life. Go to combat. I will attack Jordan for six. Flying yeah. Trigger to it. We get to vote. I would like two clues. You get treasure for me. The value in that commander is amazing. You're getting a clue from me. A clue. I will tap Soul Ring and Mana Crypt for six mana. I will crack a clue. Four mana floating. I will crack a clue. Two mana floating. I will crack a lost clue. Zero mana floating. I will tap... Uh, for three mana, I will cast a Bellwar Stone, and I can... So one mana, two, three, four, I can pay for it. The guy is rich, paying for both my triggers, wow. And then I'll tap Bellwar Stone for two to cast a Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, I'm paying for first stick. And with that, I'll pass the turn. And a turn I would like to cast Mystical Peter. Uh, I'll pay for uh, fish. And people are paying for their taxes. I don't like that. I will reveal Time Warp. Goes on top of my library. Uh, float a colorless. Time to play Time Warp. Draws a card. Oh, and uh, trigger monster monk. So I have an interaction in my hand. I have a misdirection. But I know that Anis has a fierce guardianship in his hand. And Anis is for some reason sandbagging his fierce guardianship right now. And if I cause misdirection, which is amazing versus time warp. Like, it's, it's incredibly good interaction because that thing targets and I can change it to me. So I get a turn. Then Anis will use his fierce guardianship. So I'm going to sandbag here. And uh, we're not losing yet. But, I mean... If Anis is gonna send back, I'm gonna send back too. So since I don't have a way to reset priority well enough, I will tap a white to cast... Yeah, but if Anis realizes that we don't have anything, <laughs> he might interact. I'll switch the machine response. I cannot pay. Or I can, but I won't. Esper Sentinel draws a card. Gets the swords. Uh, back to time more, right? I will pass on time warp. I will respond to time warp. I'm gonna cast misdirection, pitching, search for Ascanta. I wanna change the target of time warp to target me. Yeah, I'm gonna fierce garden ship the time warp. Go ahead. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll pay for that, not at least. I have a response. I'm gonna cast force of will, pitching, brainstorm to it. I thought you didn't have good good responses for this once what happened i drew into both all right i have a knife trigger i'll draw a card i will pitch a temple card and then i will pass on the force pass on the force no blue cards depressing uh yep time warp resolves and i guess mons gets the next turn anyways i'm gonna play mystic sanctuary it's gonna put time warp back on top of my library i mean we use uh, we use the interaction we had right move into combat attacking for two four seven um ten at uh pontus don't your tokens have prowess at all? Or? Yeah, uh, I only played one spell. No blocks, take 10. I'm gonna cause an impulse in your end step, floating a colorless mana. I guess we're taking snap and sending the other two, the other three cards to the bottom of this deck. 
Then I don't want to use the last colorless mana and a blue and cast Psychrift on the Wishclaw Talisman. Sure. Then I'm going to go to my turn and draw a card. So I'm not that close to winning, and it feels like everyone is close to winning except me. And I need to, like, interact with a bunch of them. Snap and Into the Royal are pretty good here. And sitting back with his Mystic Remora and his Esper Sentinel drawing interaction and just bouncing things here and there might be a good way of getting there slowly. I, can I really want to cast my Commander and imprint something and start getting value through that way. But I feel tapping out for my commander is just a little bit risky. We will put that land into play another round. Maybe we can do it anyway. It's cost one thing on her. B. No, I need to tap too much mana for that. It's honestly better to just keep... If I didn't have the Mystic Remora, I would definitely cast my commander. But because I have the Mystic Remora and we're in this kind of counter battle, I think we're gonna stick with the fish. Paying for Mystic Remora with my Soul Ring. Play Mox Diamond. Pitching Ursa Saga. Play War Room and a pass to Anis. Going to my turn, draw card. I'll play a uh, tropical island. I will then tap to two and then three, four. I would like to cast a finale for two. Ah, go ahead, draw cards. I'm. I have to pass on this, guys. I don't think Mons has one either. I pass as well. Cool. I'll target my dark side in my graveyard. Dark side trigger on oh, ATB. How many minis close to infinite mana? Uh -oh. I pass on ATB. And then I will do one, two, three, four. Taking the damage from the 31. I would like to cast Emil the Blessed. Trigger knife. Am I good to draw? I'm going to pay two life and draw a card. That doesn't do anything. Once, it has to be done. Bounce my Tivit. <laughs> oh, he's going to force it. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's out of sit. Yeah, that's the bauble. Like I. All right, I have a feeling I know what's going on. I have a feeling what's in your hand. I'm gonna cast a snap targeting your commander Pontus. No response. Yeah, I'm gonna response. untap my two lands here. He goes to my hand. I'll cast Force of Will, pitching to it, countering Emil. Yeah, I'm giving you one either way, uh, but I, do, I will pay for a special one. Sure. Uh, Emil the Blessed gets countered. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Yes, that's a funny interaction. So that was a great outcome. We got rid of Annis, Emil the Blessed, and Pontus Commander, and Pontus Force of Will. I like to activate Thrasios. Uh, look at this top card, send it to the bottom, um, it show you uh, Emergence Zone. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna greet a bit. Did I hit it? Moves to the bottom of the library. I just need to hit that one card. Now it comes in to play top. Cool. I'll pass turn. Yeah. Untap and draw. I am not paying for my Mystic Remora. I'm gonna cast Shun Li Countless Kicks. But I'm also going to put this island into play. I'm going to exile into her peak and snap. So I need to pay five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then I will pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a mana confluence. I will play a cast a Jewel Glutus, paying for Esper Sentinel. Tapping three, cast a Remonolith. Trigger connive, I'll draw something and then I'll pitch this third Mesa. I will use my Colorless Floating to cast a Mana Vault. Crack my Jewel Glutus for four white commander mana. Tap Mana Crypt for three. I'll use a Colorless to tap the Mirror Signet for two blue and one black. I will use my four commander mana, one Colorless one blue and one white, or black, to cast my commander. One blue and one colorless left in pool. I will take two clues. Um, I'll give you two treasures. I'll give you two treasures. No, oh, one treasure, I mean. Okay. Tap Felwar Stone for two black. Cast the Wish Cloth Talisman, one black floating. And responses, I will use my black floating to activate it, giving it to Mons. Thank you. So we just realized something. I have an int I have an into the royal, which I can cast on to Pontus Commander, bouncing it, making it harder for him to win. Even though if even if I actually bounce it, he will just get the time sieve, crack the time sieve, get an extra turn, still have the mana to cast his commander, and that should be game. However, there's also another problem. His commander has Warden, which means I can't actually pay the mana to cast into the royal at it to begin with, so I can't do this anyway. However, that meant that I couldn't have cast Snap on his commander either. Just realized that now, which would have meant that Pontus commander would never have gone to his hand, he would never have been able to do the force of will, which should mean that Anis won the game. However, we discovered it now, and it's everybody's fault. Pontus missed it too. So, how it works in a judge scenario, if we would have called a judge right now and said, we missed something two turns ago, the judge would have said, oops, you all missed it, it's all your fault, you're all for getting a warning in this tournament. 
So in the end, we missed it on the snap, uh, but now we discovered it later. But anyway, if I would have bounced his command right now, he still would have won. Worthy mention here as well is that I used War Room to draw a card because I was trying to draw into a counterspell for the Emil the Blessed. If I knew about the ward, I would never have paid the War Room mana, and I could have paid for the snap on the ward to bounce the commander. So in the end, this would have happened anyway, even if we missed even if we would have noticed it. Actually, I have an out, kinda. I just saw this spell that is a little bit weird. I'm gonna cast Into the Royal on your Kinnan, bouncing Kinnan back to your hand. This is in response to your Wish Claw. Then I'm gonna cast this spell, Curfew. Each player shoots a creature he or she controls and returns it to owner's hand. So I will return my Shun Li, and you'll be forced to return your commander. I will find the time. I'll find the time seed. Tap two, cast the time seed. Tap three, one, two. The treasure. I'll cast my commander, losing one life. Uh, so my commander will need to be. I will make five artifacts. It doesn't matter what types anymore. Uh, let's just say three treasures, th two clues, because that's what I'm beginning. Then I will tap time seed, sacrifice those five to take an extra turn. I'll go to this turn. I'll go to combat. I'll attack. Jordan and Mons, who doesn't have flyers, you make five more artifacts every turn to continue taking extra turns. Then I'll go to combat attacking Anis. He does have a flyer, but I have to I do have five extra artifacts to sacrifice, so even if even though I don't connect with them, I still may have enough artifacts to continue attacking. And thus I'll attack everyone until they are dead. GG's Pontus, congratulations. Good game. Uh, we were really close. Uh, there were some weird plays that happened. Close game. Uh, everyone was uh, super close to winning. Um, I think I got to showcase the deck, which I'm happy about, but a little sad that we didn't get the win. But we'll get them next time. So now that I've played a few games with Shun Li, I actually think I know why she struggles. It's very hard to see on the paper when you just read the card, but when you go into the meta of swords, you notice like, oh, in this pod she struggles because of this and etc.